We used to fill our cooling system with untreated tap water. Often, within only a couple of months, we'd find that the water had gradually gone bad. We then had to play around with various combinations of chemicals in an attempt to get the water under control. But we had little luck. We found a huge amount of rust in the system. Our lab tests also indicated the presence of a lot of bacteria and algae. All the problems pretty much disappeared when we switched over to the grander system. We just don't have to deal with these issues anymore. Water is a crucial factor in our production process. We needed process stability and now we have it. We're not much interested in taking water samples because we're not physicists or chemists. We prefer to stick to what we know best. If you had asked me last year whether such a simple change could have allowed us to use water without chemical treatment, I would have said, no way, not a chance. Often water has flowed a long way from the mountain to the valley. There is an old proverb that says, water is not clean until it has flowed over a stone seven times. There has been practically no research into the question of the importance to water of motion. What does the water pick up along its way, from the air and from its surroundings? Does it bring information with it from inside the earth? Has it absorbed oscillations from minerals and ores? If so, can human beings retrieve it at the mouth of the stream? In an extensive experiment with asthmatic children, researchers at the Paracelsus Private University in Salzburg wanted to find out whether the waterfall at Krimmel had healing properties. 54 children were tested at a fun-filled summer camp. A group of children spent a fun-filled holiday at Krimmel, but far from the thundering waterfall. They were in high spirits. At the end of the three weeks, their lungs were tested. The overriding goal was to see whether this climatotherapy worked well on the children, whether they could take a positive long-term effect home with them, so that they could remain on their feet, especially in winter, when their lungs are likely to pick up an infection. The second group of children spent one hour a day at the waterfall, where the young asthma patients inhaled the spray. The microclimate of a waterfall has a high concentration of ions in the air. The humidity is almost 100%. This is the other group of children, the group that played for an hour a day at the waterfall and was exposed to the waterfall. Their lung function was also tested parallel to the other group. Playing near the impact zone, the children inhaled the humidity in the form of respirable water droplets. We don't know how the whole thing works, but we want to find out within the framework of this study at Paracelsus University. Most likely negative ions are not responsible for the effect, because we have already conducted an animal experiment in which we administered a similarly high concentration of negative ions to asthmatic mice. In that experiment, we were able to rule out any influence from the ions as an isolated parameter. Water vapor as well, as an isolated parameter, had no influence on lung function in animal experiments. At a dramatic rate, asthma is becoming a widespread disease in all age groups. One must not overlook the fact that one Austrian child in 10 now has asthma. The rate of allergies is rising in a striking manner, and the rate of asthma among adults has doubled over the last 12 years. We have to act using gentle methods that have been confirmed by scientific medical evidence. The result of this research project is clear. Spending time at the waterfall led to a lasting improvement in the respiratory tract and had a positive effect on lung function. It is remarkable that the reduction of all asthma symptoms among the children at the waterfall lasted for four months. Ultrafine electrically charged water particles were transported through the respiratory tract to the lungs by the microfine mist, 
causing lasting, functional, symptomatic and immunological improvement. One can demonstrate that homeopathy works in the same manner. Up to now, we've taken a series of images in an unsystematic manner, and they reveal that potentialization, shaking and diluting, changes the images. We've done our own experiments with shaking. In this case, we used ultrasound to agitate the water, and we could see that the drops changed. And we could also see that plants grow more rapidly when they are watered with this kind of water. And from that point of view, there can be no doubt in my mind that there is an effect. Because if the image of the drop changes, there has been a change in the informational content. And if the informational content is changed and communicates with the body water from outside or by mixing, then it is also clear that the control function of the body can be different too. Professor Kröplin's team assigns a high priority to their droplet analysis. A simple visit to the dentist can become a spectacular experiment. And it was one of my colleagues, he went to the dentist, and he had to have an x-ray, and so he thought, I want to have a look at the effect the x-ray has on me. So he took a drop of his saliva and put it in a little tube and left it outside while he was having his x-ray taken. And after the x-ray, he again took some saliva and put it in another tube. And when he got back to the institute, he took some more saliva and put it in a third tube. And then he took the three different saliva samples and looked at them under a dark field microscope. And he could see the way his saliva looked before he had the x-ray at the dentist's a short time later, and the way his saliva looked when he was back at the institute, and it had recovered somewhat. We thought that to be a highly interesting experiment. Water plays a decisive role in everyday life in the preparation of food. Bakers in particular are aware of that. They consider Grander's water revitalization to be an insider's tip. When you consider that the rule of thumb is two parts flour, one part water, you realize how important water is. Master baker Josef Schnallinger from Pramet in Upper Austria secretly installed water revitalization equipment at his bakery. The bakers came to me and said, the sourdough runs over every day. There must be something wrong. What's going on? Every day we stir up the same ingredients with a dough machine, and every day the dough runs over. That's how I discovered the power of grander water. It's the only thing that could be doing that. News of the special effect of the water spread like wildfire among the baking community. Grander simply gave us the opportunity of taking a step forward. The dough has become more lively because of it. We use less yeast, but as a side effect, the dough takes up more water and simply makes the bread easier to digest. We get bread that has a smoother taste and stays fresh longer. For us, these are fundamentally important aspects. We no longer need additives like guar gum or swelling flour. Instead, we use high-quality flour and high-quality water, and with that combination we get results that others only get by using additives. The news has even reached Italy. Massimo Grazioli of Milan is a baker heart and soul, and he too tried the experiment. The bread certainly has a thinner crust, more refined taste, and is easier to digest because we use far less yeast, both natural and compressed yeast. It produces bread with a more tender crust and a more pronounced and regular texture. The taste is improved as well. Of course you can bake bread without grander water, but if you want higher quality and a real high quality product, it helps enormously.